Amen. Amen. Brethren, I take this opportunity to welcome you again to this session. And uh, we thank God for another opportunity that he has given us to meet here again on Zoom. It's my hope and trust that you have had a wonderful week and that uh, you also prepared to receive the blessings that God has prepared for us today uh, through his servant, Elder Roger Kisto from Trinidad. As we continue with this series that we have been looking at, that is not unto them but us and uh, today looking at out of the common order and so i pray that we may all be ready to receive the blessings that god has prepared uh, us uh, for this day and uh, have your pens and papers ready take down some notes remember at the end of the session you will have an opportunity to ask a question or even to give a comment and uh, the session will be translated in swahili so that the message is clear to all of us. Kwa hivyo ndugu karibuni sana katika fundisho hili tunapokuwa tukiendelea kuangalia swala hili ambao tumekuwa tukiangazia kwa matuma kadhaa sasa ya kwamba sio kwa wao bali ni kwetu sisi na tumekuwa tukiangalia mpangilio wa kanisa na kuweza kuona ya kwamba kando na kanisa ambao liko sehemu fulani basi pia kuna umuhimu wa kuwa na mpangilio zaidi ya kanisa sambao liko sehemu fulani na kuweza kuungana tukiwa ndugu kutoka maeneo tofauti tofauti ili kwa kazi ya injili iweze kusonga mbele. Kwa hivyo tunapokuwa tukiendelea katika leo tunaangalia uh, kutoka ama tuondoke katika mpangilio wa kuja. Basi ni nini haya ambayo tutaweza kuangazia? Ungana nasi tunapokuwa tukiendelea kuangalia masuala haya kwa kidani. Elder Cristo, thank you again for finding time for us and uh, karibu sana so that you may begin the session as we continue. Welcome. Thank you very much, uh, La Karuga, and welcome again to those who have joined. So I want to go and pray immediately and then we go right into the sharing and uh, um, see what God is going to do. Yeah. So Father in heaven, I thank you so, so very much again for this live presentation that will be aired and thank you for the communication devices thank you for those who have made sacrifices to come on thank you god for keeping us safe during the week that has gone and tonight lord we just want to say thank you and even as we go into your word today i pray oh god that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight speak to me lord on this very very um, controversial subject. I pray, O oh God, that clarity would come to minds and hearts will be watered to investigate. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Just give me um, a couple of seconds to share my presentation. So today we want to look at part six of not unto them but unto us and we're looking at out of the common order. Uh, basi siku ya leo tunaangalia uh, sehemu ya sita ya fundisho hili ya kwamba sio kwa wao bali ni kwetu na tunaangalia fund, uh, kichwa cha fundisho ya leo ni kutoka katika mpangilio wa kawaida. Now, now to many of us this subject is going to be definitely new and I beg your indulgence as we go forward in the name of uh, Jesus. Basi kwa wengine wetu fundisho hili likitakuwa ni jipi ya kabisa kwa hivyo naomba uh, tuweze kuvumiliana na tunapokuwa tukisonga mbele na Mungu aweze kusaidia kutukalia masuala haya. So Gospel Order which really is church organization this has become contentious over the years, even though it should not be. 
Kwa hivyo mpangilio wa injili ama mpangilio wa kanisa ni swala ambalo limekuwa na utata sana lakini haistahili kuwa hivi. And the truth is things have not gone ideally as God would have it. In short, we are just there are things that we are concerned about with regard to gospel order. Uh, na kweli mambo hayaja kuwa uh, jinsi ambavyo Mungu angetamani iweze kuwa. Kwa hivyo hakika kuna maswala ambayo tunastahili kuzingatia sana inapokuja katika mpangilio huu wa injili. This this final church that we are in, we need to get back to divine order if we are to carry forward this gospel with power and authority. Uh, kwa hivyo basi kanisa hili la mwisho tunastahili tuweze kuja katika mpangilio wa injili ikiwa tutaweza kukamilisha kazi hii ya wakati huu wa mwisho. And, and, and not because there have been some um, apostasies and failures in this area are we to throw out everything with regard to divine order. Na kwa sababu ni kweli kumekuwa na wasi na mambo ambayo yamefanyika mabaya kuhusiana na mpangilio wa injili lakini hii haimaanishi sasa tutupilie mbali swala hili lote la kuwa na mpangilio and you know there, there are some independent churches that they do not want the gospel order at all even to have a pastor or an evangelist is our name that is a negative that's a no no ah na utapata kuna makundi mengi ambao wana hofia sana mpangikuwa na mpangilio na hata mpangilio kwa mfano hata kuwa na mchungaji ama hata uh, wainjilisti watumishi wa injili wanaona ni kwamba ni kitu ambacho ni la na hatustahili kuende katika njia kama hii You know Mrs White said in the book Acts of the Apostles that there would be a further perfecting of order praise the Lord a further perfecting of order hmm Uh, dada italiweza kusema uh, uh, kwamba kutakuwa na umuhimu wa kuweza kukamilisha ama kuendelesha zaidi mpangilio huu wa injili. So the Lord says in Isaiah 43 that we're going to get some new and unbelievable things. It says behold I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert oh praise the lord hallelujah amen na basi tunaambiwa pale katika kitabu cha Isaya 43 mstari wa 19 tazama nitatenda neno jipya sasa litachipuka je hamtalijua sasa litafanya njia hata jangwani na mito ya maji jikali amen amen and in in, in habakkuk Chapter 1 and verse 5 the second part of the verse says for I will work in a I will work a work in your days which you will not believe though it be told you amen amen na pia tena katika kitabu cha Habakuki moja mstari wa 5 sehemu ya pili inasema kwa maana mimi nitatenda kwa maana mimi natenda tendo siku zenu ambalo hamtaliamini hata mkiambiwa amina Amen. So we, we, we are sure that as we come to the end there will be a further perfecting of order until it is fully perfected. Praise God. Hivyo tukona uhakika tunapokuwa tukikaribia siku ya mwisho basi tutakuwa na kukamilisha na kuendelesha zaidi kwa mpangilio wa injili kwa mpangilio wa kanisa. Amen. So this this famous statement in the book Evangelism it says the Lord will work in this last work in a manner very much out of the common order of things and in a way that it will be contrary to any human planning. God will use ways and means by which it will be seen hallelujah that he has taken he, that he is taking the reins in his own hands. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Basi katika kitabu hiki cha Evangelism ukurasa wa 118 aya ya kwanza kuna nukuu hii ambayo inasema na kwamba Bwana ataweza kufanya katika siku hizi za mwisho katika njia ambayo ni kinyume sana na kawaida ya mpangilio wa mambo 
na katika njia ambayo itakuja itaonekana kuwa kinyume na mpangilio wote wa kibinadamu na Mungu atatumia njia ambazo itaonekana ya kwamba anachukua uh, kazi ile katika mikono yake mwenyewe amina amen 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 so let's go forward a little again so but we, we need to bear in mind according to peter peter refers to the church as the flock of god first peter 5 and verse 2 Uh, basi ni vizuri pia kuzingatia yale ambao Petro anasema uh, maana pale katika Petro wa kwanza tano mstari wa pili anaashiria kanisa kama kundi la Mungu Christ is both the head of the church and he is the chief shepherd according to Ephesians 5:23 and 1 Peter 5 and verse 4 Na basi Kristo ndio huwa anaitwa kichwa cha kanisa na yeye ndiye mchungaji mkuu kulingana na mafungo ambayo inapatikana katika Efeso 5:23 na, na pia Petro wa kwanza 5 mstari wake wa 4. So in spite of the perfecting of order we need to maintain that Jesus Christ will continue to be the head and the shepherd of his church. Amen. Na basi kando na hayo ni vizuri kuweza kutambua kwamba Kristo ataendelea kuwa kichwa na mchungaji wa kanisa lake. Amen. And, and, and look at this example of Christ his his um his he, he being the chief shepherd yet being the lowliest servant and you must always bear these things in mind. Na pia ni vizuri kuweza kuzingatia kwamba Kristo ambaye licha kwamba yeye ndiye alikuwa mchungaji mkuu lakini pia yeye ni yule ambaye amejinyenyekeza sana na yeye yako chini sana. Amen. So it says in Luke 12:37 from a different version it says blessed are those slaves whom their master finds alert when he returns. I tell you the truth he will dress himself to serve and have them take their place at the table praise God and will come and wait on them. Hallelujah. Amen. Basi tunaambiwa katika Luka 12:37 kwamba heri watumwa wale ambao Bwana wao ajapo atawakuta wanakesha. Amin na waambieni atajifunga na kuwakaribisha chakulani atakuja na kuwahudumia. Amen. 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 So God has placed my friends, he has placed special ministerial gifts within his church and it is for a particular reason that cannot cannot be overlooked at all. Amen. Basi wapendwa Mungu ameweza kuweka vipawa za kuhudumu katika kanisa lake na hii ni jambo ambalo hatuwezi kuifuuza ama kuipita tu. Kuna karama na vipawa ambazo ameweza kutoa kwa kanisa lake kwa kazi hasa ya kuhudumu. Amen. Amen. So in this passage in Ephesians 4 I will read from verse 11. It says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith, praise God, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Basi tukisoma katika Efeso 4 uh, tukianzia mstari wa 11 inasema naye alitoa wengine kuwa mitume na wengine kuwa manabii na wengine kuwa injilisti na wengine kuwa wachungaji na waalimu kwa kusudi la kuwakamilisha watakatifu hata kazi ya huduma itendeke hata mwili wa Kristo ujengwe hata na sisi sote tutakapofikia umoja wa imani na kumfahamu sana mwana wa Mungu hata kuwa mtu mkamilifu hata kufika kwenye cheo cha kimo cha utimilifu wa Kristo. Amen. 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 So so these gifts are to be recognized, they are to be respected and as coming directly from Christ to fulfill the purpose that he has described for us in this chapter. Amen. Hivyo vipawa zile zinastahili zichukuliwe kwamba zimetoka kwa Kristo 
na zimetolewa kwa kusudi hilo ambalo limeweza kuelezewa pale uh, katika mstari huo wa 13 amen amen, amen. so i'm going to look at verse 16 again in the interest of time it says from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part praise the lord maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love amen amen na basi tukiendelea katika kitabu hicho cha Efeso tukiangazia sana sana mstari wa 16 nasema katika yeye mwili wote ukiungamanishwa na kushikanishwa kwa msaada wa kila kiungo kwa kadri ya utendaji wa kila sehemu moja moja kuukuza mwili upate kujijenga kujijenga wenyewe katika upendo amen amen but, but if, if you go amen. back to verse 14 verse 14 says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lay, they lie in wait to deceive hmm. basi tukirudia tukirudi pale katika mstari wa 14 inasema ya kwamba ili tusiwe tena watoto wachanga tukitupwa huku na huku na kuchukuliwa na kila upepo wa elimu kwa hila ya watu kwa ujanja tukizifuata njia za udanganyifu amen so i have laid the foundation so that you will see that i am not speaking of anything other than divine order as seen in the scripture. Ah kwa hivyo basi nimeweza kuweka msingi ule ili tuweze kuona sizungumzii kitu ambacho kiko kando na mpangilio wa Mungu kulingana na maandiko yake. Amen. You, you find characteristically in independent ministries there is a sort of a standoff and a disregard for those whom God has chosen to spearhead and lead this work. Hmm. Uh, utakuja kupata kwamba katika makundi kuna hali ya uh, kutokutambua wale ambao Mungu ameweza kutenga hasa waweze kuhusika kuwa kipaumbele hata katika kazi hii. And, and even those who are, 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 are selected as leaders do not even understand the authority that God has placed in them as servant leaders to direct the work right up into glory. Ah na hata pia wale ambao ni viongozi hawaelewi ah jukumu ambalo Mungu ameweza kuwapatia ah la pia kuweza kuongoza kazi hii kusonga mbele hata kufikia utukufu. So there's a growing tendency within the membership ship of the church to be always confrontational with your leaders not understanding that they are specially called to direct God's church to the end na basi kuna hiyo hali ya kuwa washiriki wakiwa katika vita sana na wale viongozi na hawaelewi ya kwamba wametunukiwa jukumu hilo la kupata akupeleka na kusongesha kazi hii kwenda mbele. Amen. So we want to look at this principle here that is found in the Old Testament and see if we can carry it with us in this new era just before the second coming of Christ. Ah na basi na tatu tuweze kuangalia msingi huu katika agano la kale ambalo tunaweza kuachukua ule msingi na ile a uh, uh, swala lile na kulitumia hasa katika sisi tunaoishi katika wakati huu kabla ya kurudi kwa Kristo mara ya pili. Amen. Amen. So 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 Brian I want us to stay with this here because we are going into a little controversial line and it will require us to be in the spirit to grasp this not by force but by the spirit of God. Amen. Uh, kwa hivyo na tatu tuweze kuwa makini tunapoingilia swala hili maana ni swala ambalo linakuwa na utatanishi sana na kini ni vizuri tuweze kuishika kulingana ama katika uwezo wake roho mtakatifu kwa hivyo tuweze kuwa makini tunapokuwa tukiendelea and, and i agree that there is a, there is the priesthood of all believers now according to peter 
but this is a principle of leadership that we need to pay a particular attention to even right now amen uh, ni kweli kuna ukuhani wa kila mtu kulingana na na petro lakini msingi ambao tunakuja kuangalia sasa ni msingi wa uongozi ambao uh, ni muhimu kuweza kuzingatia amen and Miriam and Aaron speak against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. Verse two, verse 2, And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Verse 4, And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam, Come out ye three, into the tabernacle of the congregation and they three came out and the lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called aaron and miriam and they both came forth amen amen basi tunapata kisa kile katika kitabu cha hesabu 12 kuanzia mstari wa 2 nasema wakasema je ni kweli bwana amenena na musa tu hakunena na sisi pia basi bwana akasikia maneno yao basi huyo mtu huyo msa alikuwa mpole sana zaidi ya wanadamu wote waliokuwa juu ya uso wa iji. Bwana akanena ghafla na Musa na Haruni na Miriamu na kuambia tokeni nje nyinyi watatu muende hemani mwakukutania. Basi hao watatu wakatoka nje. Bwana akashuka katika nguzo ya nguzo ya wingu akasimama pale mlangoni pa hema akawaita Haruni na Miriamu na wakatoka nje wote wawili amen amen so it goes on in verse 6 and this is where i really want us beloved to open our eyes and see what the lord is seeking to show us by his grace na basi tunapoendelea mstari wa 6 hapa ndio nataka tuweze kuzingatia sana tuweze kuona ni nini ambacho Mungu anataka tuelewe kupitia kwa neema yake so it says in verse 6, and he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so. Hallelujah. He is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Hmm. Amen. Basi akaendelea mstari wa 6 anasema, kisha akawaambia, sikizeni basi maneno yangu. Akiwapo nabii kati yenu, mimi Bwana nitajifunua kwake katika maono, nitasema naye katika ndoto. Sivyo ilivyo ilivyo kwa watumishi kwa mtumishi wangu, Musa. Yeye mwaminifu ni mwaminifu katika nyumba yangu yote. Kwake nitanena mdomo kwa mdomo maana waziwazi wala si kwa mafumbo na umbo la Bwana yeye ataliona. Mbona basi nyinyi hamkogopa kumnenea mtumishi wangu huyo Musa? Amen. Amen. So I, I want us to gather these thoughts now as I go forward. All right? Hmm. Praise God. Now, Miriam and Aaron were prophets. However, God did not speak to them. He spoke to Moses, not in a dream or in a vision, but mouth to mouth in a special and a different way. Hallelujah. Amen. Kwa kumbuka Miriam na ata Aruni walikuwa ana kwa iko cha unabi na kini Mungu anapozungumza na Musa alizungumza naye mdomo kwa mdomo na si kwa mafumbo Amen So while notice what they said they said um, does God speak to you alone Have you noticed that they are asking Moses is God speaking to you alone my dear brethren Ah uh, kwa hivyo wanauliza Musa je Mungu anakunenea wewe peke yako so the point is, God can speak by his spirit to leaders in a special way 
that is not contradicting the word of God itself. Oh, praise the Lord. Hivyo, point ya nyani hivi, kwamba mungu waneza kunena na wale ambao wako katika nafasi hiyo ya uongozi, kwa njia speciali kupitia kwa roho wake, na kwa njia ambao haitaenda kinyume na neno lake. So, so, so the common order would have been for them to consult and um, to do things. But in this case, God said, I speak to Moses not in dark sentences or shadows, but mouth to mouth. I say praise the Lord for that. Amen. Kwa hali ya kawaida, basi ingebidi kweze kuwa ni kama mazungumzo kati yao, lakini mungu hapa anasema, na zungumza na musa mdomo kwa mdomo bila kutumia mafumbo yoyote na kwa hivyo kwa hayo tunasema bwana asibiwe amen, amen. so let, let, let's see why they came against moses in summary one um, in the appointment of the 70 elders miriam and aaron were not consulted basi hebu tuangalie kwa nini wana muingilia musa basi katika ufupi tunakuja kuona ya kwamba katika kuteua wale wazee sabini Miriam na Aruni hawakushau hawaku uh, yani hawakutafutwa kutoa maoni yao hawakushirikishwa Point number two, the ready acceptance by Moses of the counsel of his father-in-law had aroused in Aaron and Miriam a fear that his influence with the great leader exceeded theirs Hmm. Uh, tena uh, kule kukubali kwa uh, kwa hiari na kwa haraka uh, mbapo Musa alikubali ushauri wa mkwewe basi ilinua ndani ya Haruni na Miria uoga ya kwamba mvuto wake basi uta, kama kiongozi utaanza kuzidi wao so they came against Moses wife because they felt that it was her influence with her father that caused Moses to make these two decisions. Na kwa hivyo wakanza kumpinga mke wa Musa maana walidhania ni kupitia kwa yeye na mvuto wake ndipo baba yake akakuwa na mvuto na ushauri mkubwa kwa Musa ambao basi swala lile lingefanya wao yani wakose kuonekana wakiwa uh, katika hali ya juu kama Musa. So in our time we will object just like Miriam and Aaron and probably say Elder Kesto you do not have a word on this how could you make a decision like that? Are we together? Hivi pia na sisi katika siku ya leo kwa mfano tukiangalia jambo lile unaweza pata kuna swala ambalo linaweza toka katika kanisa na ndugu aweze kusema ewe mzee kwa nini ufanye wa kama huo uh, ambao uh, yani bila kuweza kuzingatia neno la Mungu vile linatuambia Praise the Lord So as we come to the end of time this same principle again I believe will be seen in the church where God will empower his servants with special gifts and they will do things that seems contradictory to councils and the word of God but it is true nonetheless. Ah uh, basi ninaamini kwamba hata tunapokaribia nyakati hizi za mwisho basi Mungu ataweza kutumia wajumbe wake katika njia ambazo ni kando na mpangilio wa kawaida wa kawaida wa mambo lakini ilhali mambo yale si kwamba yanapinga maandiko. Amen. So uh, Ella Kuruga, I want to ask the brethren if they are following with me because this is very very critical and seemingly controversial but we want to go forward so i just want to ask the brethren if they are there with me okay basi ndugu tungependa kuweza kujua kama tuko pamoja maana hili ni fundisho ambalo kwa kweli ninaweza kuwa kwa wengine na kutatanisha lakini kama tuko pamoja basi andika tu pale amina uh, pale katika chat ili tuweze kujua kweli tuko pamoja. So just type amen brethren so that we may know that uh, we are together uh, as we continue with the study. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Now, this is why, especially in independent Seventh-day Adventist churches, we are very resistant to the prophetic gift. And because uh, basi katika u Adventista, kunakuwa na iyo hali ya kukani kama tunapinga kipawa hiki cha unabi. Because we do not believe that God could speak to people as, you know, specially, like he spoke to Moses, and that they can make great recommendations or even decisions on behalf of the church. Maana hatuoni kama uneza kuwa na uwezekano wa mungu kuzungumza na watu wake kama vile alizungumza na Musa na kutoa mafetekezo na pia kuweza kufanya maamuzi uh, katika kazi hii. So while we are not a lord it over the church, over the members, we cannot deny that God is going to speak to his leaders, his men and women in a special way that seems contrary to even scripture as we come to the end. Kwa hivyo, uh, si kwamba ni kutawala watu, lakini pia ni vizuri kutambua kwamba mungu aneza zungumzia hata hao viongozi kwa njia ambayo si kawaida ya mambo lakini kwa njia ambayo pia inazoonekana kana kwamba inaenda kinyume na maandiko lakini ni njia ambayo Mungu anaweza tumia hasa hata katika wakati huu wa mwisho tunapokaribia mwisho wa dunia hii amen. amen amen this is why James White said we should not be afraid of that system which is not opposed by the bible and is approved Praise the Lord by sound sense. Amen. Amen. And because uh, James White akeza kuandika ya kwamba tustaili tuogope mfumo huu ambao hauja enda ama hauja pingwa na maandiko na pia inadibitishwa hata na damiri zetu. Amen. Amen. So when, when we do not recognize God's gifts within his church, there will be divisions and delay is going to be the results. Hmm. Na basi tusipotambua vipao za Mungu katika kanisa, basi kutakuwa na kuchelewa na pia kule kuanguka ama kutokufuzu ndio yawezekana kuwa ndio matokeo. Notice notice this when Joshua and Caleb came back with a good report Notice what was said in verse 10 of chapter 14 in the book of Numbers. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones, my dear friends. Ebu, abu angalia baada ya Joshua na Caleb kweza kuja na ripoti yao. Basi pale katika hesabu kuminane msari wakumi. Nambiwa lakini mkutano wote wakaamuru wapigwe na mawe. All because... The tendency is not to recognize the spirit of God and the spirit of prophecy working through his delegated servants. And it happens over and over and over again. Na hii ni kwa sababu ya watu kutoku tambua roho wa mungu ambaya nafanya kazi kupitia kwa viongozi wake ambao mechakua. Na hali hii ama kasumba hii imekuepo na huwe inajirudia kila wakati kila wakati. And, and, and even leaders are afraid to stand on the power of the Spirit. They are, they are hedging and seemingly just afraid to, to even speak this because of the fear that people may, may think that they are trying to rule and control. Nata viongozi wenyewe pia wanaogopa kuzungumza maswala haya na pia nena maana wanakopia waneza kuchukuliwa kana kwamba wanataka kutawala huni. So when God's men get visions for the work, it is normally met with a lot of discussion and debate and searching of scripture instead of trusting the spirit, getting the witness and going forward. Lord have mercy upon us. Basi unapata ya kwamba wakati watumishi wa Mungu wanapopata maono kuhusiana na jinsi kazi na staili isonge mbele basi wakati mwingine inakumbwa na upinzani mwingi watu kuzungumza zungumza watu kuanza uh, kufanya upelelezi mwingi katika maandiko 
uh, badala tu ya kuweza kuamini na kutambua kwamba Mungu anaweza kutumia njia hizo zingine ambazo si za kawaida na zipingani na maandiko. And you know there is always the caution and the quoting of the Bible and the spirit of prophecy to support our delay which is almost like those men that said let us stone Joshua and Caleb. Na unapata kuna hiyo hali ya kuweza kukimbilia katika kusema ni Biblia na Roho ya Nabii na katika hiyo harakati basi kuna kuwa na kuchelewa kutekeleza mambo na hii inakuwa ni kama vile mkutano ambao ulisema na tumpige Joshua na Caleb mawe. Hmm. And that's why there was the delay in verse 34 of chapter 14 it says after the number of the days in which he searched the, the land even 40 days each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities even 40 years and you shall know my breach of promise have mercy amen and because basi kukawa na hali ya kuchelewa na kusoma katika hesabu 14 inasema kwa hesabu ya hiyo siku mlizo peleleza ile inji yani siku 40 kila siku kuhesabiwa mwaka tayachukua maovu yenu hiyo miaka 40 nanyi mtakuja kufarikana kufarikana kwangu amen amen so let, let's go on a little further and see what the lord has here for us basi hebu na tuendelee mbele kidogo tuweze kuona ni yapi ambayo bwana ako nayo kwetu siku ya leo so let's look at this, what I call a landmark ruling by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 12 from the Easy Read Version. So Paul is dealing with the issue of marriage and divorce, remarriage, and other social issues in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Kwa hivyo pale katika wakorindo wa kwanza saba, Paul na zungumza kusu maswala ya ndoa na talaka na kuolewa tena. Ahayo ndio maswala ambao anaguzia pale katika wakorindo wa kwanza saba. So when he reaches verse 12, he says, the advice I have for the others is from me. The Lord did not give us any teaching about this. If you have a wife who is not a believer, you should not divorce her if she will continue to live with you. Amen. Nabasi, pale katika mstari wako mina mbida anasema, lakini watu wengine na wambia mini, wala si buwana. Ya kwamba yuwapo ndugu moja anamke, asia mini. Na mte huyo anakubali kukaa nae, basi, basi mwaji. Amen. So, you know, so Paul usually would quote from the scripture, but now he says he doesn't have a direct word from God, but yet still, it is not inconsistent with scripture, and it just makes good sense what he is saying. Amen. Kwa kwa kaida, Paulo alikuwa na nuku maandiko, lakini hapa anasema ni... Ni, ni, ni ushauri wake ama ni maoni yake ya anatoa lakini ni ushauri ambao haupingi hau neno la mungu na pia unambatana na, na dhamiri ama ni jamba ambalo ninakubalika hata katika dhamiri ya mtu so, 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 so what I'm saying beloved is we need to open up our minds to the spirit of God as we come to the end not everything may be spelt out in scripture, but it is not inconsistent and it makes for good sense and for good practice in going forward. Kwa hivyo, point yangu ni kwamba, si mambo yote ambao tuneza ya pata moja kwa moja katika maandiko, lakini si mambo haya si mambo ambayo ya napingana na maandiko, na ni mambo ambayo thamiri zetu zineza kubaliana na ayo, Na basi kwa sababu kuna maswala kama yale ambayo ya taifuka, ni vizuri tuweze kujua uh, kuna njia hiyo ambayo pia mungu wa kutumia. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. You see, brethren, we are stuck in the common order and we are afraid to be perceived as we are not standing on the word. But let me tell you this. God is going to work out of the common order as we come to the end. Amen. Dugu zangu, kuna ile ukawaida ambao tumezoea na wakati mwingine basi mtu anaona kana kwamba anakosea kwenda kinyume na ukawaida huo. Lakini niweze kuelezea kwamba neno la Mungu linatuambia Mungu atafanya kazi kinyume na mpangilio wa kawaida wa mambo katika nyakati hizi za mwisho. Amen. So I, I, I wouldn't read through the verses, you can read it. But when you read through the rest of the verses, you will realize that what Paul was saying is not inconsistent, even though he didn't get it from the Lord. And yet still, it made very good sense as a practice going forward. Amen. Na kasi, ukendelea katika kisa kile msari wa kumina tatu wadi kumina sita, uteza kuona, basi yale ambao paulu wanazumbuza pale, Nichi ya kwamba haku wameatoa kwa wana moja kwa moja Lakini ni maswala ambayo yalikuwa yanaleta yana maana na yanaeza kueleweka Na yanaeza kutambulika vizuri hata katika zamiri Na basi ikawa ni jambo nzuri kufanya hata kusonga mbele uh, nana Amen Amen You see we, we need to move away from looking at Paul or Peter or even Mrs. White And see that it is this spirit of God, the spirit of prophecy in them that causes them to speak and teach in that manner. Masi, tunasaili tuweze kuondoa macho yetu, kutazama Paulo ama Petro, ama mtumishi wa Mungu Dada White, na tuanze kugundua na kuona ya kwamba ni kipawa hicho cha unabii kilichokuwa ndani yao ndio iliyosababisha waweze kunena jinsi walivyonena kwa hivyo ni vizuri tuweze kutambua kipawa hiki bado kipo na kina, kinaendelea tu amen praise the lord praise the lord you see as the church comes to the end there of course will be deceptions which causes us to be driven to the word which tells us that his spirit is going to be poured out in a marked way upon his people. Na kwa hivyo wapendo tunapo endelea mbele ni vizuri kutambua kwamba ni kweli kutakuwa na udanganyifu mwingi ambayo itasababisha uh, basi mungu waeze kupatia watoto wake mbua yake na uh, ambayo itaweza uh, kuongoza na kuweza kuwasaidia na basi ni vizuri kuweza kutambua pia tupo katika nyakati kama zile. So just like Moses, God God is going again to speak to his people and um, the spirit of God will lay instructions upon them for the moving of the church in the direction God wants them to move. We must come to that point. Hivyo kama vile tu siku za Musa basi Mungu ataweza kuweka roho wake ndani ya watu wake na kuweza kuwaongoza na kuwazungumzia na ili kuweza kupeleka kazi hii mbele na ni vizuri tupikie mahali pa kutambua hivyo na kukubali hivyo kwa maana ndio vizuri tunapokuwa katika wakati huu wa kumalizia kazi praise the lord so so uh, elakru i want to ask you um, i'm just half in my presentation or there about i am thinking to hold the other half because it is going to, it is really heavy and um i'm thinking of probably making a part two of this and probably we could do some discussion on what we would have said for clarity um in the first part of the presentation you you, you let me know you advise where that is concerned yeah yeah i guess i guess that 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 will be totally okay uh at least so that we may have time of us to even to to meditate upon what we have had uh so I, th that will be really good to have a second part and uh to just get views from the brethren uh so far from what we have looked at amen so so let me just summarize in 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 a couple sentences one 
the church needs to see God is working out of the common order by which we have been operating for all the time that we have been in existence. Ah, uh, kwa hivyo nikiweka mambo haya yote kwa mtasari, kitu ya kwanza tunastahili tutambue ni kwamba Mungu anafanya kazi kinyume na kawaida ya mpangilio wa mambo ambayo amekuwa akifanya kwa ambao tumekuwa tumezoea kwa muda mrefu. While we are to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, we cannot deny as with the apostle Paul, the Lord gave him revelation as to how to go forward that really could not be found in the word of God. Na ni vizuri pia kuweza kutambua ya kwamba Mungu kwa mfano kama vile kisa cha Paulo alimpatia hata katika ufunuo maswala ambayo hayangeweza kupatikana katika maandiko na hii ilikuwa ni muhimu ili kuweza kusonga mbele while our rule is the law and the testimony we, we, we have to see that god is going to operate as he did at pentecost as he did in the 1844 movement and as he did with moses in the wilderness amen kwa hivyo ilhali ya kwamba msingi wetu ni uh, kwa sheria na kwa ushuhuda ni vizuri kutambua kwamba bado kwamba mungu anaweza kufanya kazi kwa njia zingine kama vile alivyofanya pale wakati wa pentecost kama vile alivyofanya katika uh, fugu la ama mfumo wa mwaka 1844 ama pia vile ambavyo alifanya na mtumishi wake Musa kwa hivyo ni vizuri kutambua Mungu anaweza kutumia njia hizo ambazo ni kando na kawaida ya mambo amen amen so next week god's willing we are going to look at some other proofs as to how god is going to work out of the common order even in this time right up to the end of time kwa hivyo katika juma lijalo tutaweza kuangalia au shahidi nyingine zaidi wa kuonesha kwamba Mungu anaweza kufanya kazi kando na mpangilio wa kawaida wa mambo hasa katika wakati huu na kuweza kusonga mbele hata kuweza kufunga kazi hii amen the church needs to believe that God has endowed his leadership with the spirit of God and he, he wants them to empty themselves so that he can work with them in a marvelous way as we come to the end of time thank you very much video ah ni vizuri kanisa itambue wale viongozi ambao Mungu ameweza kuwapatia na kwamba anaweza kuwatumia kwa njia speciali kuanenea kupitia mambo wake na kuweza kukamilisha uh, mambo makuu na kazi nyingi uh, katika wakati huu. Ni vizuri washiriki tufike katika kuweza kuelewa uh, Mungu anaweza tumia njia hiyo pia na ataweza kunena na watumishi wake na viongozi kwa njia ambayo uh, uh, kupitia kwa roho wake kwa njia ambayo itaweza kusababisha ile kazi kuweza kusonga mbele. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much uh, Elder Kisto for uh, that presentation. And uh one point that uh has really stuck in my mind and uh, which is very important is that we need to understand that uh all these people that is Paul, uh, Peter, Ellen White, uh Moses and all these uh it's because of the gift of this the spiritual gift that was in them that they were able to speak and to uh, say as they say and uh this gift is still alive and uh the church cannot come behind in no gift so we need to understand that uh, if god used that way uh, to speak to them at that time he can also use uh he can also speak to his leaders to his people in a way that uh you know it's not contradicting the scriptures and so brethren we need to come to that point to understand uh that it's not everything that we have to Uh, substantiate from the bible and the spirit of prophecy but we need to understand that god can work also out of the common order of things amen amen, amen. thank you so much elder kisto for that presentation and uh, brethren i trust that you have also uh, learned something and uh, so at this time we open for anyone with a question or if you have a comment 
I request that you may unmute your microphones at this time, and uh, you're going to get your that opportunity. Kwa hivyo ndugu, uh, na tumai basi, kuna jamba mbalo mejifunza ama mejikumbusha, na basi mepika wakati wakweza uh, kupokea maswali ama yote ambaya kuna nyongeza, uneza kufungulia microphone yako wakati huu, na utaweza kupata na nafasi ile. So karibuni sana, Brother Gregory, your microphone is on. Welcome. Auskiki vizuri, sijika mauneza karibia simu. Unasikiko kiwa mbali. Watumisi wote, pamoya na mtumisi, na wasalimu katika njina la yesu. Amen. Uh, to all the brethren, together uh, with you, Elder, I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, thank you for the lesson. Uh, so I, I have something to add and also one question. So, no, no. Uh, sorry, Rudia Rudi Tena, Rudia Tena, Brother Gregory. Now, this is Joel. Joel 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 uh, so will will that prophecy uh, fulfill again or was, has it already been fulfilled uh, back in 1844? Praise the Lord. Um, so that, that, that's the question, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the question. Right. Um, it it, it will... It, it will be fulfilled till the end of time. So it was fulfilled at Pentecost. It was fulfilled after the, the sign in the sun and the moon. But it has to be fulfilled right to the end of time because anything after the fulfillment of the, uh, the, the sign in the sun and the moon, it is considered the end of time, the end days, the time of the end. So we are living in that time. So we expect to see more and more fulfillment of that powerful downpour of God's Holy Spirit upon his people. Amen. Kwa hivyo, ile fungu tunarajia kuamba itendelea kutimia hata musho wa wakati. Ilitimia pale katika Pentecost, itatimia pia bade ya ishara ya mwezi na nyota ambao ilifikia miaka ile ambao tunamandiku inasema ni musho wa wakati. Na kwa hivyo, katika kipindi hicho, uh, unabi ule utendelea na kutimia maana siku ambazo tunaishi zinaitwa siku za mwisho kwa hivyo tunatarajia unabi ule bado utendelea kutimia hata kufikia uh, mwisho Yesu anaporudi amen sasa nilifia hivi mhm kulingana na kulingana na Galatia kulingana na ile fungu ya ya wa Galatia ile moja ile inasema Na siku sasamani yesu aliongea nasi kupitia manabi. Na siku isi tunaso isi yesu anongea na, mungu anongea nasi kupitia mwanae. Uh, so, uh, what about the, uh, the verse that we read uh, in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, which says that uh, God uh, in the past spoke to the prophets, but uh, in these last days he has spoken to us through his son. Mm -hmm. Brother Gregory and Elia? Eh, sir, and you're going to Lisa? Papa Mandu and Atuambia is what Mungu at a Tonga Nazi could be dear Moana. Ah, so that was uh, is telling us that uh, in this time, in this last days, God is going to speak to us through His Son. Na love to Gangalia got taken great to Andros in Atuambia, so at a pig of Yunjis, Elia, Leo Pig, and Atta to Gangalia, Ile selected and the message in the book to paint with a four and a same at that. Ile, 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 ile miunjisa alio tumia mbeleni hata tumia kulingana na bile saisi kuna kuwa na ile kwa muka kuingi kwa miunjisa na watu wanaamini miunjisa sana. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, also, like uh, we read in the spirit of prophecy, uh, for example, like the, 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 the gift of miracles that God will not use the gift of miracles at this time because of the way it has been uh, counterfeited by the devil. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I, I have no problem with these things. For example, um, the, the Lord is going to, um, the church must come behind a no gift. So as the need arises, God is going to fill the need. And that's, that is his creation principle. So what he did, he creates space and then he fills it. So God is going, is going to work again out of the common order, especially where decisions for the church and it's moving forward through its leadership is concerned. Or we have the examples. Okay, kwa hivyo, ni kweli hayo yote na sina shida na hayo, lakini ni bizuri pia kweza kutamboya kuamba wakati kunako kuwa na itaji basi mungu huwa anafanya kazi uh, katika nyakati ile na basi pointi ambayo ilikuwa nayo ni kwamba katika siku za mwisho uh, Mungu ataweza kutumia njia ambazo si za kawaida ya mambo na ataweza kunena na watumishi wake na ataweza ku, uh, kutumia roho wake kuweza kunena na kuongoza watumishi wake hata katika kazi hii katika kuweza kusonga mbele and, and, and one more thing how does God speak to Jesus Christ? We are told ah. that the last church will have the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. So as God fills men with that spirit, they will be declaring only Jesus Christ. And that's how he speaks. Na ni kwanje ipi ambao mungu anazungumza kupitia kwa mwanawe. Kumbuke ya kwamba mungu anatumia ushuhuda wa mwanawe ambao ni rohe unabi. Kwa hivyo... Uh, kupitia kwa kipawa hiki bado Mungu anaweza kuzungumza na watu wake na kuweza kuwapatia na kuonesha mapenzi yake na neno lake na basi kwa njia hiyo pia Mungu anazidi kuzungumza nasi kupitia kwa mwanawe. Amen. 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 Thank you brother Gregory. Uh, I hope the, your questions have been answered. Na no, my... Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you for the answers. Uh, you never comment too. Okay, uh, so I just want to finish by uh, the point I wanted to add uh, concerning uh, God's people who, uh, who you learn from England going to America, as I explained in the Great Controversy. Uh, that is Great Controversy, page 291. Paragraph, mm -hmm. okay. uh, okay, so he's going to read in Swahili. Okay, so he's going to read in Swahili. Okay, so he's going to read in Swahili. So, uh, <laughs> Pastor Robinson said a very important point, and uh, that's what I want to highlight. Anasema mm -hmm. hivi, mchungaji wao, mchungaji wao, John Robinson, ambaye alisuiliwa kuta, kuta, alis, alisuiliwa kuambatana nao katika ujumbe wake wa muiso na, wa, wa, na wakimbisi awa alisema, ruu sasa, Unatangana, wana ndia na anayejua ikiwa itaendelea kuisi, mpaka nitakapoonana nyuso sen tena, lakini ata kama buwana, ata kubali, iwe hivyo, au la, ninawaangisa nina mbele sa buwana, na, na mbele sa malaika sake, watakatifu. Musinifuata mimi, saindi ya mbavyo, Kristo ikiwa, ikiwa mungu 
atawafunulia njambo lolote kwa kutumia mchombo chake kingine chochote kweni tayari kukipokea kama mlivyofanya daima kupokea ukweli wote kupitia huduma yangu kwa maana ninaamini kabisa Bwana anao ukweli na nuru saindi ambayo ataendelea kusifunua katika neno lake tukufu kwa hivyo anazindi kusema sasa anaenda akitaya anasema watu kama hawa na hawa wangeendelea wangepita pale walipoachiwa na wansilisi wao kwa hivyo nashukuru kwa ajili ya lesson nzuri na tusindi kus, na tusindi kuangazi, kuangalia sana kwa hivyo Mungu anaweza tumia kama mtumishi ama watu wengine jinsi anavyotupeleka tupate kusikamana na kupeleka injili mbali kabisa kwa hivyo nimeshukuru Amen. Amen thank you so much so that's the point i just wanted to add uh, concerning uh, pastor robinson and uh, the advice that he gave his people that uh, you know god, god still has more light to reveal to his people and uh, we should be ready to receive it uh, just as they would have been ready to receive it from him so uh, brother gregory has finished with the word saying that uh, uh, just like we are uh, continue to learn many things uh, even from these studies then uh, indeed let us listen to what god is telling us and to the way that he is uh, directing us to so thank you so much Amen. Uh, thank you so much uh, brother gregory for that comment and uh, god bless you okay uh siji kama kuna mwingine yako na swali ama jambo la kuongezea uh, elder juguna welcome your mic is on so thank you elder karuga and i take this opportunity to uh, say hi to elder so habari ya jioni elder vizuri <laughs> sana correct <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for that presentation though I was late to join uh, uh, since I was coming from Nairobi and uh, but uh, there are some points that I have noted and uh, there is this uh, kind of a mistake uh, many people does uh, in various organization uh, whereby people tend to think as you have already said in the case of uh, uh, Miriam and Aaron when they raise against uh, Moses and uh, most of the people uh, try to tend to think whenever you give us suggestions uh, through the word of God is as if you are commanding people and it is not so but uh, maybe just to pose a, a retro question in this aspect what can we do in uh, maybe uh, whenever you see people raising against each other because uh, i understand that in terms of uh, uh, the way you are teaching us in terms of gospel order the spirit of the prophecy uh, is subjected to the prophet and uh, wherever anyone should become uh, try to say something it is uh, which is not against the, uh, which is against the word of god we should at least know that uh, this is uh, out of uh, uh, order that god has already said so because we have experienced some uh, quite a, not retro problem but it's a hard problem whereby people see as if they are being uh, uh, dictated whereas it is not uh, maybe uh, dictations uh, in such a way well, well first of all um ala sam we, we have to teach educate the people on a few things one is that god is again working by his spirit and we have the scripture to testify to that two from the get go people need to see that in gospel order there needs to be a certain respect for those whom god has called because like with moses notice what the lord said i i speak to him mouth to mouth he was in a different category than even Miriam and Aaron who were both prophets themselves so people need to understand that the leader needs to be um, need not be afraid that in espousing that he will be looked upon as a dictator that's all right because you're moving by the spirit and God is going to give the evidences yeah so the churches have been taught and groomed 
into challenging leaders challenging um, what is said so therefore we will not come to the place very quickly if we continue to do that operate that way because the lord is now seeking to work out of the common order the statement that brother gregory just left with us it showed that more light is to come and it, it may not be spelled out in the scripture but it is not against scripture and it is not against common sense and the witnesses will be there but the churches have not been taught to do that because we have come out of bad systems we have come out of dictatorships we have come out of kingly powers so anything that looks like it we are free to, to, to deal with it because the first thing that will be said is that we have another dictatorship on the rise so we need to differentiate between the work of the spirit and the work of another spirit but we are certain that god has great things again for us to do um he has great decision for us to make he could tell elder sam go over into ethiopia and set up a church um the lord could tell you that but if we are not being open to the move of the lord you would find we will always be debating looking for accreditation seeking counsel and all these things are good but the the, the, the lord is the lord wants to do something special with his people he, he wants to do something special thank you Elder. thank you for your response in fact that is uh, as you have already said uh, it is quite encouraging to see uh, when church is moving uh, with the one clad and then uh, the progress will be very fast in the various organization and uh, from what we we have been uh, learning uh, from uh, uh, the previous uh, uh, topics in such uh, and we have experienced this uh, whereby sister churches uh, when they are connected uh, together the work of god will be so easy and uh, most of these problems that we are facing will be shut out. And thank you for your response. Uh, to your family. Thanks, Elder Sam. God bless you and your family as well. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Juguna, for uh, your comments. And uh, God bless you. Okay. Uh, is there any pers other person with a comment or a question uh, at this time before we end the session? Sijikama. Kuna mwingine ambaye kwa na swali ama jambo la kuongezea uh, kabla hatujaweza kumalizia. Na kwa sababu naona hakuna yote mwingine amefungua microphone basi langu tu ni kuweza kufihimiza uh, utakapopokea rekodi hii uweze kuwa na nafasi ya kuweza kuirudia na itaweza kuwa ya baraka kwako. So uh, brethren I just encourage you to have time to go over this message. Uh, once you receive the audio and uh, also the the video will be made available on youtube uh, so you can be able to go over the message again as we share it with those who are not able to join the session and uh, so to close off the session i uh, i welcome you again elder Kisto, for the final comment all right so i i, I want to go right into the prayer because it's raining pouring rain where I am. So let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for this word that came through today, Lord. It is something that we need to continually go over and prove it because Satan at the same time has a counterfeit that looks so very much like the real that we need to be guarded against it. Bless your people. Bless, um, bless us until we come again next Tuesday. Bless all the believers, their families, their ministries and in particular their gifts in jesus name i pray amen amen thank you again elder kisto uh for your time thank you so much uh for that lesson so may god bless you as you continue enjoying uh the showers of rain there so mungu aize kwa pamoja nanyi god bless you and uh looking forward to the second part of this study next week so may God be with you as you prepare. Uh, greetings to your family and also to the brethren. Thank you so much. And uh, for all who have joined, thank you. God bless you. And uh, this marks the end of our session. Until next Tuesday, God be with you and bye-bye. Amen.